Hey guys, welcome back to Walking the Line from Research to Practice. I'm sorry for a bit of a layoff. Uh, as I started this project, we all of a sudden started getting a surge of COVID-19 patients here in San Antonio, Texas. And so it's kind of dug into my ability to be able to produce some of these videos. So I figured I had a few days off and let's get back at it. So episode number four today is going to be about the length of catheter that we use for ultrasound guided peripheral IVs. The study we're specifically going to be talking about is by Ball A et al. And this was published in the Annals of Emergency Medicine 2020. So pretty recent study actually. And this was a randomized clinical trial from two sites. And what they basically did is they took all patients who were gonna get ultrasound guided peripheral IVs and they randomized them into one of two arms what they called a long catheter and an ultra long catheter. So a long catheter is considered 4.78 centimeters or 1.88 inches, depending on where you live in the world. And the ultra long catheter was 6.35 centimeters uh, or 2.5 inches. And essentially it's important to know where they were putting these things. And if you look at the breakdown about 40% of these were in the basilic vein, 35% of them were in the brachial vein, and 20% of them were in the cephalic vein. So these were all really proximal veins, and that'll be important as we talk a little bit more about this study. Now, interestingly, what they were trying to do in this study was not figure out first attempt success but actually the median duration of catheter survival, which makes sense because patient care doesn't just end in the emergency department. Oftentimes these patients get admitted and it's important to help our colleagues out so that these patients aren't just sitting up on the floors and just handing off our problem to somebody else. So that's exactly what they did. And when they broke it down for their primary outcome, what they found is that the ultra long catheter lasted on average about 5.78 days compared to the long catheter, which was 3.9 days. Now, things that we would care about is looking at first stick success. And this was 74.1% in the ultra long group and 79.4% in the long catheter group. And there's no surprise here because the procedure is exactly the same. It's just the catheter is a little bit longer. So you wouldn't find there to be, you'd be surprised if there was any difference in that first attempt success. Now, if you look at the average number of attempts, it was about 1.4 for the ultra long catheter versus 1.3 for the long catheter. Again, no surprise there. And then for the things that we worry about, things like DVT or infection, there was actually zero cases reported in either group. Um, so this is a good thing. And we'll talk a little bit more about that because the longer the catheter, the more potential chance of getting clots and infection just because there's more foreign material inside the vessel. Now, one of their secondary outcomes, which I found fascinating, I don't usually put a lot of weight on secondary outcomes, was the optimal catheter length in the vein. And I think this is a really important thing to understand. It's not that we're just using a longer catheter. It's how much of the catheter is actually in the vein. And depending on where you're getting your ultrasound guided peripheral IV, this is going to be different. But what they ended up finding is that for the longest duration of catheter life, you needed about 2.75 centimeters of the catheter actually in the vein. And we've all seen this where we spend the time putting the catheter in, we use ultrasound, we prep the patient, we put the sterile uh, tegaderm over the ultrasound probe only to find out they went for CT and the thing popped out. And there's just nothing more frustrating for the patient, for us, uh, the time we took. And so, you know, the key here is, is that you want as much catheter in the vein as possible. And this will be important pre-procedure to use your ultrasound to assess how deep is this vein? What's the diameter of this vein? How much tissue do I have to traverse to be able to get to that? But I think it brings up a very solid point, which is we just want to use the catheter that will get the most in the vein as possible, but you don't necessarily have to use an ultra long catheter on every ultrasound guided peripheral IV. That's not what this study is saying. Now, I told you there were some limitations, and I wanted to kind of talk about some of those. So first of all, I told you there was no DVTs. And I think it's important to understand that every patient was not evaluated for DVT. And this is often common in these types of studies where safety issues are 
typically underreported because they're not looked for in a uniform manner. So although I'm telling you there was zero cases in each group, we don't really know if every patient was evaluated. The second thing I'm going to tell you is at the beginning we talked about which veins were actually accessed. And I told you these were all proximal veins. And so it makes sense that for proximal veins, they're usually a deeper vein. And so there requires more tissue to traverse to get enough catheter into the vein. And so the findings of this study are specifically in regards to these proximal veins because there was just not very many veins accessed uh, on a uh, distal portion of the extremities. So it may be that a long catheter is more than enough in those um, distal veins. So the bottom line of this study for me in terms of practice is that the length of the catheter is probably not as important as the length of the catheter in the vein. And the way each of us can do this is that we need to assess with the ultrasound what is the distance we have to traverse and what is the diameter of the vein we're trying to access. And based on that, we should be able to make a prediction of whether a long catheter or an ultra long catheter will help kind of improve the life of that IV access for our colleagues in the hospital. So let me know your thoughts, questions, any concerns you have, or other questions about this study or this practice at all. I'd love to hear from you. And until next time.